Your word, see that? Your word is a light to my feet and a lamp to my path. The word of God, the word of God. Hearing from God and being obedient to the Holy Spirit is actually what's guiding us, the believers, not what we actually see. That's why non-believers fake like they happy, but really inside they toe up and they scared because they don't know what to believe in. And then they don't want to, they don't want to listen to us because their grandmas beat them in the head with a Bible and forced them to go to church. So when they finally got old enough, they said, I'm never going to church again. I'm never, the God ain't real. And Jesus didn't do nothing to you. It was your doggone grandma, your uncle, your auntie, your mom, somebody like that. But it wasn't Jesus. But there's a scripture in the Bible in Philippians where Paul talk, Paul is locked up and he's talking about how Jesus Christ is being preached. He's talking about how some people are preaching them with happiness, joy, love, and peace. And then some are pe preaching them with anger, strife, jealousy, and envy. And watch this. Paul does this. He didn't get mad at either one. He was overjoyed for both ways because he said, as long as Christ be preached. So even the harmful, hurtful, disrespectful grandma and back in the day way, we still got Jesus. The sheep that Jesus was talking about, the, the, Jesus said, Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. When I call, they answer. So even if your grandma did beat you in the head with it, when you when you older now, you look at it. Listen, in this ooh, when, 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 the, when the Lord showed me this earlier, it really just blew my mind. Je the Lord said this to me. He said, some of y'all is 40 and 50 years old, still mad about what your grandma did to you at church when you was eight. Missing your trip to heaven, you 50 years old, mad at God because what happened to you when you was eight. I don't think we thinking this through, y'all. We don't want to go to heaven and don't want to serve the Lord because it was forced on us when we was 10. And we use that as our excuse not to go to church while we 40. Is this, am I helping somebody? Is this making sense? We, we don't want to go to church so bad and don't want to serve the Lord so bad that we still fussing about what our grandparents and moms made us do when we was kids. What about now? Come on, Candy Pie, me too. I, and I got my butt whooped all the time. I was an anointed drummer for my church and they wanted me at everything. I was at every convocation. I was at every church visiting. I was the drummer for all, the whole Kojic district in LA um, at some time, uh, at one point. And I was out here trying to throw up gang signs, smoke weed and chase women. I'm sitting on them drums like, I can't wait to church is over. But Sitting there being, I, I, God found his way for the word to get in me. It didn't make sense then, but when I got older and God said, hey, hey, it's time now, it all made sense. Like, oh, all of that from the age 18 till about 30, from 18 to 31, I wasn't trying to go to church. But when 32 hit, I was just like, you know what? I'm finna go to church on my own when nobody forcing me, nobody calling me, telling me I should go with them. I just got up, walked in there on my own. As soon as I went in there, sat down, for your glory came on, for your glory, I was gone, crying. And I said, wow, this feels good. This is what I was missing. But the beauty of that scripture, Paul talks about, he's locked up in chains, he's in prison, and he's happy that the people are out there preaching Christ, whether it's nice, or whether it's with strife and envy and, and, and meanness. He said it doesn't matter as long as Christ is being preached because he knows the goodness of Jesus. The man might have tainted it, but Jesus is more powerful than the man. So he was excited like, man, I know you probably got church hurted into Jesus. But when you come to find Jesus for yourself, you're going to be so glad that the person that delivered Christ to you did, even if they did it in a condemning jealousy or a judgmental type of way, you get it now because you got the real Jesus. Mm. But that's another message. I just had to throw that in there. Um, go to Hebrews chapter four, verse 12. 
Hebrews chapter four, verse 12. Hebrews chapter four, verse 12. Where's my Bible? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna play with y'all. Hebrews chapter four, verse 12. Come on, Bible. Sorry, y'all, I'm all over the place. I'm just trying to get, I'm almost out your way. I got a couple of more scriptures and then we are gonna get up out of here. But I just wanted to highlight I don't, people want to talk about the Bible as fake because they don't believe in God. The Bible's not fake. They just don't believe in God. And that's where you put a period on the end of that. It ain't, just don't, don't, you can't, you can't gauge the word of God off of you because you don't believe. That's on you, brother or sister. Now, in Hebrews chapter four, verse 12, it says, for the word of God is alive and powerful it is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword cutting between soul and spirit between joint and marrow it exposes our innermost thoughts and desires this is very interesting this is how powerful the bible is a scripture you can stumble across will expose how you really feel that is a living book it said it divides between your soul and your spirit. The Bible is too real. If you want to keep it real, real. The Bible is too real. There's scriptures in here. You could think you live in your best life, your holiest life, your most saved, sanctified, delivered, consecrated. I don't commit no sins. And it is a scripture in here that will make you be like, ooh. I need to clean that up. I didn't know that was a sin. That's how alive it is. You can't get around it. You cannot live a perfect life without the Bible. Something in the Bible will show you that you going to hell if you don't receive Jesus. I hate to say it that way. When I was going, when I was studying this, God showed me this. He said, people tend to, ooh, watch this. People tend to mix positivity with godliness. Two different things. Positivity and godliness are two different things. A lot of people think because they got good hearts, they positive and they nice, they go into heaven. That's why they say stuff like, I don't need to read the Bible. I'm not a bad person. The Bible is not for bad the people that are bad people. The Bible is for us to find Jesus and get where our father, the creator is. People think the Bible is all about good and you being a good or a bad person. It's a bunch of people out here in this world that ain't did nothing wrong to nobody. And if they don't know Jesus Christ, it's ugly. I know it's narrow, but it's God. God gave us the freedom of choice. Listen, you have to put yourself in God's shoes. These are some big old shoes. Watch this. If you said this, okay, we're going to play like we got. And no offense. We do a horrible job at it, as you can always see, Lord. But if you were God, and you said, you guys, my people, you have the freedom to do whatever you want to do in this world. You can do whatever you want to do. But if you want to be with me, you have to believe in my son. I sent him to die for you, the ultimate sacrifice. All you have to do is believe that he died for you and you can come spend the rest of your life forever and ever in eternity with me. But you can do whatever you want to do. You see how that works? Who are we to say, I don't believe we have to go through Jesus Christ. You better believe that because God gave you the freedom to do whatever you want to do. He said, yeah, you can live how you want to do as you. That's your choice. But if you want to be with me, I didn't send my son to die for no reason. He was with me in the beginning when I said, let us make man in our image. Who you think he was talking to? A lot of goofies like to say there was other gods. Why you think he said let us? He was talking about him, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And while we're on this real quick, watch this. People like to say that the Bible ain't real. Watch this. How many of y'all, ooh, watch when I say this. How many of y'all actually seen the Holy Spirit? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Who actually seen the Holy Spirit? 
Exactly. But it's real. You feel it. It tells you the Holy Spirit is never wrong when it tells you something. You can't tell us the Bible is fake. We ain't never seen the Holy Spirit and we walking in it right now, speaking in tongues, prophesying, going places where it's leading us to go. And the thing is there that we need to address, touching people, laying hands here, being healed, all of this stuff. And we ain't never seen it. But the Bible fake. And these non-believers will go get a crystal, will go burn something, will go wear something and say, I'm spiritual. I'm spiritual. But the Bible fake and God don't exist, but you spiritual and you can't even see none of the spirit that you, Joe, you can't see none of the spiritual stuff you claiming. You know, I don't, I just, me, I love the Lord. Right, right. Come on, Candy Pie. I love the Lord. And I'm not just going to, listen, I'm not going to attack everybody that got something bad to say about God or disbelief. But the Lord told me to talk about this. This book of remembrance, the book that hits different, their names got wrote in a special scroll because they believed and kept honoring God while everybody else was doing whatever the hell they wanted to do. This group of people that God wrote in this book of remembrance, this scroll of remembrance that's talked about in Malachi 3 and 16, their names were written in a special book. They get special privileges because when everybody was turning away from God and marrying heathen women and believing in sorcery and witchcraft and following all of these other things, which going on today, there was a special group of people that kept staying in there. I don't care what nobody say, man. God is real. I don't care what magic tricks these people doing around me. I'm staying right here with God. God was amongst those people's conversation and said, you know what? Look at my folks. Let me write your name. Candy Pie. Mm hmm. Maria, you see me faithfully. Hmm. Crystal B. Mama Zoom. C. C. Jesus Talk. S. J. Ron. Elder Craft. Kiki, he just started not writing all kind of names down because they was rocking with God no matter what it looked like around them. They didn't let the trick of the enemy and all his little cool little trinkets of deceit, they didn't let that stuff win them over. I seen somebody posted a post I got two more scriptures I'm going to read too, but I want this to say this. Candy pie. That is a very good question. Um, the reason why people cuss while they talk about God is because they don't have any self-control. Um, it's obvious that the relationship that they have with God is not very loving. People that cuss and talk about God, their relationship with God is them complaining about other people and cussing while they talking to God. You see what these m is doing? I can't stand this. You know, the, that's, the way their relationship is with God um, is the reason why they cuss while they talk about God. Um, one of the biggest indicators that you have the Holy Spirit is self-control. If you don't have any self-control, this does not mean you don't have the Holy Spirit. You just don't have a cultivated relationship with the Holy Spirit. You don't have a cultivated relationship with God. If you really spend time with God and you really adore God and worship him and, 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 and you're just in awe of everything that God is doing in your life and you're just so impressed by the power and the love of God over your life, you will never cuss while you're talking about God, ever. This show, these type of things shows your level of relationship with God people that cuss and talk about God, people that have a cussing type of mouth anyways, they don't spend true adoration time with God. 
You know, some people think because they went like this, that that was spending time with God. That's not spending time with God. You was just talking to him real quick. Spending time with God is really adoring him, like just laying somewhere and just thinking back over your life and just thinking about the good things, being happy with the little stuff that you got. Um, sometimes the Lord will send you to see somebody in a toe up homeless state just so you can remember how good he is to you. So these things, this, all of this stuff comes from relationship with God. Um, I know a lot of people that I'm talking about F bombs, the B word, all of that while they talking about God. And I, I can't, you can't say nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Kiki. You can't say nothing because a while back I used this analogy. True saints of God, true saints of God. When we hear don't judge me, it's like garlic to a vampire. That's the equivalent to garlic to a vampire, to a true saint. So it's hard to correct unknowledgeable people about God. It's hard to correct them because they're going to say you're judging them. Now, all through Proverbs, it tells you that you correct the fool, they become even foolisher. You rebuke, a wise, you rebuke a foolish person, you make a fool of yourself. You correct wise people, they become even more wiser. You correct people that are true walkers of Christ, they get happy about it. They might be upset, but they're thankful for the correction because what you're doing is getting them back in line, you know, and they don't look at it like, don't judge me, don't tell me what to do. So it's very hard to deal with these types. And the best way I deal with them is don't deal with them and just pray for them. I just pray for them. Um, you know, I don't try to correct. You can tell who you can correct and who you can't correct. You can tell. Um, so, you know, I had a dream that God told me to look back. How would I know if that was really him? Because you said it out your mouth. You, uh, you, you recognized it as God. He told you to look back at what? God is always going to tell you something that is uplifting, encouraging, um, warning you as far as spiritually staying in line with him. Um, God doesn't, God doesn't point out the people that's being mean to you, to you. God doesn't point out the people that are doing you wrong. He doesn't go, look what they're doing to you. You know, if God, God will show you if people talking about you, God will show you if people don't like you. And the way he tells you to move is the best way ever. You don't have to let them know. The devil is the one that wants you to let them know. I'm, I'm not dealing with y'all no more because y'all talking about me behind my back. It was you, 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 and you. That's not God. That's the devil. He wants you to do that so it can cause a fight or it can cause permanent breakup amongst families, permanent breakup amongst friends, permanent breakups amongst love um relationships and things like that. God will give you a heads up on who's talking about you and he'll tell you, don't even say nothing to him. Just move on with your life because he's protecting you from getting out of character. He's protecting you from saying the wrong things. He's protecting you from killing somebody with your mouth. So he'll just tell you to move on. Um, but it depends on what God told you to look back at. That's the determining factor if that was God talking to you or not. God allowed me to hear people's conversation talk. Hey, me too sometimes. And uh, sometimes I'm not even going to lie. I don't like it. I'm like, oh my God. Because you don't want to hurt their feelings, but then you still got to deal with them. Especially while I'm talking from my level. Because me being the founder of LOE and everybody, everybody's a Christian. Everybody a Christian. So it's so hard to deal with people when God has given you heads ups about people. And he don't want you to say nothing about it. And, you know, and I understand why God has told me things about people and not to say certain things about people. And later on in life, then people have came back and spoke highly about me saying, man, you know what? I didn't like you. or I used to uh, think you were so judgmental and this, that, and the third, but you never judged me for nothing I did. And I truly appreciate you dealing with me and, 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 and uh, giving yourself enough space to, under, to give me time to understand where I was going wrong. So these are the reasons why God tells you not to say nothing because he's giving now he's doing something in their life. A person will, people will not like you and you ain't never did nothing to them. Like why? And if you 
let that get to you, you'll be your feelings will be hurt. You'll be somewhere trapped in your own room, just sad. Why don't nobody like me? But um, you know, God just wants you to just keep going because they'll come back. And uh when they come to their senses, they will come back and tell you, uh, you know, man, I used to think this, that, and the third about you. And even if they don't, they gotta deal with that. If they don't come back and say nothing, they just fake like they like you now. Or they just let that die and start this new friendship with you without telling you how they really feel. They got to deal with that. Not you. That ain't even your problem. Because you didn't do nothing to them. All right. But, um. Right. There you go. Shrug. <laughs> um. But yeah, Kiki, what did God tell you to look back at? What did he, he just said? Look back. If he just, if some told you to look back, I wouldn't, I don't know. Cause God don't want us going backwards. He want us to learn from what we, we're, we're overcomers. Overcoming and going backwards is totally opposite. That's like plus and subtract. That's like left and right. Your kingdom spouse. He wants, he wants you to look back at them. And go back and get them. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I really couldn't tell you that one. I mean, like, it's a. I would just say this. Um. That's what I was thinking too, Michaela. Um, I was thinking the same thing. Like he was saying, look back over your life. Like look where he's brought you from. Um, and look at you today. This is, uh, this, these type of conversations are hard to have because I don't want to be like judgmental or speculating. Or, but one thing I can say, examine everyone in here. Let us examine ourselves. What are we doing to get closer to God. Are we living a life? We have to ask ourselves this. Are we living the life that we think God is somewhat satisfied with? Like, do you think God is happy with how you live for him today? And if you can honestly say yes, then that could be God talking. But if you still like, ah, I mean, I do be still, I'm still... <laughs> Right, me too, me too. It's, it's always room for improvement, don't <laughs> um, Some of the, how can I say that? I'm trying to say this right without, like, okay, I'm gonna I'm a, I'm a use myself in a scenario. Now, if I'm drinking, smoking, sleeping around, messing around with drugs, messing around with all kind of different little voodoo stuffs and interested in all kind of witchcraft and stuff like that, and then I'm saying I'm hearing from God, I'm going to be a little spectacle. I mean, I'm going to be a little uh, skeptical about it. Like, well, I hope that you sure this guy I did. I was looking at a Ouija board the other day and I did have a crystal ball. So, uh, and I did watch a, a witchcraft movie about witchcraft. And I do be on YouTube looking up all kind of voodoo stuff. I'm not into it. It's just interesting. That, and then you think you hear from God, I would be very careful because the Bible says that the devil disguises himself as an angel of light. So we always have to remember when the enemy is talking to us, you don't really, you can't really tell that it's the devil because he's deceitful. He's a deceiver and he's trying to hide his and disguise himself as the voice of God. You know, and I, love, I know this through people. People will tell me, I heard people, I've seen people prophesy right here in my comments. The Lord said this about you and Lord, and I'm, and as they're typing it, God is saying, I did not say that. To me, I'm just not saying nothing. I just be reading this stuff like. And I'll hear God saying, I did not, I did not say that. <laughs> I did not say that. I did not say that. You know, um, pray, pray, pray that stuff off of them. Pray that stuff off of them. Because, you know, one thing I've learned when the spirit of God, especially in my panel, especially when we're doing praise and worship, when the spirit of God is moving, Everybody feel like they can prophesy at that moment. The enemy loves to hijack the anointing. The enemy loves to hijack the anointing. Um, 
That's why I say, I ask people, are, do you think what you're doing in your private life, is, is God can say, you know what? You, you know, you're good. That's the thing, because some of us will be on, we'll be in inboxes talking freaky, watching nasty videos of real life people, being all kind of nasty and all this. And, and then we'll come to where we at praising the Lord, feel the presence of God and come in there and start talking about God. And it's like, you sure you wasn't giving the devil your time? Then you come in here and you feel the, you know, I don't, I don't had a few false prophets come up on my panel and say, it's an anointing. There's an, a, a prophetic anointing in this room. There's a prophetic anointing in this room. And then they'll come up. I got something for number three, number eight, and number seven. The Lord is saying, and I'm just, Oh my God, we have people in our family that are walking upright with the Lord. God will tell them we got pro actual prophets in our family, but you know, this, I'm not saying that those people not prophets, but sometimes the anointing be pulling and it be so heavy instead of people just enjoying the presence of God and worshiping in his presence. They feel like they got to prophesy or pray for somebody or just worship God and the spirit is here. Go in. It ain't always for you to, can I come up? I want, I got to say something. The Lord is pulling at me or they be in there just to prophesy in the way in, they, uh, in the comments. God said he got this for you and God said he got this for you and then God said he got that for you and get, you know, nine times when the spirit of prophet, nine times out of 10, when the spirit of prophecy come over me, I don't even know I'm prophesying. I just be talking and people will come back later. Like, remember that day you was praying for me? You said I should move out of California and move to, man, I moved out here. I got my own house now, a good job. Man, God was really using you to tell me to leave this state. I didn't say, hold on. The Lord just told me to tell four or five people in this room, hold on. The spirit of prophecy still moving. Wait. Hey, Siri. But no, seriously, um, you know, people, <laughs> man, yeah, I'm going to just leave it alone. I'm going to just leave it alone. <laughs> I'm going to just leave it alone. You know, sometimes we come in here churchified. Ooh, the Father God. And then people that don't even prophesy and don't won't get up in a church. This is the thing. They won't get up in a church in front of nobody in church and say the same things that they type in right here in the comments. That's the part right there. They'll come in here and, woo, the Lord said this, and the Lord said that, and the Lord said this, and the Lord said that. But then they will be sitting in actual Sunday service, and God will be telling them, go over there and tap that brother on the shoulder and tell him everything going to be all right. Him and his wife, marriage is going to be mended, and the God going to give him the next 20 years, blessed the day. And you will sit right there in church. That's what the pastor here for, the people in the pulpit. Go, but God telling you to do the same thing, you got thumb... <laughs> Thumb theologians, Ooh, that's a good one, that's a good one. The thumb theologians in the comments, the Lord told me to say this and God told me, and there's a prophetic pool in here and the Lord told me, you won't even get up in church and say nothing. You scared to even close your eyes and clap if people looking at you, but you prophesying on Beagle. Woo, wasn't trying to do this y'all. But it happens. We got to be very careful because the devil is an the devil is a imposter. The devil is an imposter. He, he you know, God said one day somebody was in my live and they was just preaching away while I was preaching in the comments. And God said, and I and I didn't listen, and I'm so sorry. <laughs> God said, tell them why don't they start a live right now and go preach? They won't do it. They can preach from them comments unseen. But tell them to go start alive, crack the Bible open and get a revelation and preach about it. They won't do it. They can't. They scared. They can't even cam up. <laughs> they can't even cam up in a lie. But you preaching from the pool and you preaching from the pews. All right. I need to go. But we got still got songs to go. Y'all, I'm sorry. Um, Kiki. Yeah, just ask God to, um, I would encourage you to ask God to reveal what he's talking about in that. Because when you look back, what was behind you? Why Why aren't you in your, uh, what did you call it? My bad. What you called it, girl? Your uh, spiritual spouse? What did you call it? Somebody help me. 
What kind of spouse is this again? But what I'm trying to ask is, why y'all not together? My a kingdom. Thank you, Michaela. Thank you, Michaela. She tried to slide up out of there. Yeah, spiritual spouse. Nah, you said kingdom spouse, young lady. Um, why aren't y'all together, if you don't mind me asking? Because I can kind of... <laughs> Good looking out, Michaela. Michaela watching you like a hawk right now. <laughs> oh, he lives somewhere else? Like in another state? This man on IG. That ain't that ain't him. Kiki, that ain't him. <laughs> that ain't, if he on IG, it ain't him. <laughs> the man God got for you gonna be right there with you. <laughs> Watch out for these IG people, man. They uh did not just did we just preach about this girl? <laughs> we just preached about this. He catfishing you, yeah. He cat he catfishing you, Kiki. Um, you know, and if his comments, if his conversation got something to do with, yeah, and I need, I just, this is how they do it. Hold on. I'm gonna call you back. I'm trying to call my cousin, see if he can cash at me a hundred bucks real quick. Oh, I got you. Don't worry. I got you. You my kingdom. What made, uh, hold on. Cause y'all Kiki, this is my little sister. I took her under my wing. So she understand when I say this Kiki duck. Throw a chair at yourself right now. What's wrong with you? What is wrong, Kiki? I'm I'm about to find you. Okay. <laughs> He's semi-famous, I think. I'm about to hang up my life. He's not catfishing. I met him a long time ago. Oh. So why is he your kingdom spouse? Spouse is a very strong word. You could have said Bible boyfriend or something. You said kingdom spouse. That's a big old jump. I think Bible boyfriend, little, you know, that's cute. It's cute. We be reading the word together. Um, but yeah, don't look back. I don't think that's God, sis. I, I really, I really don't think that's God. <laughs> but who knows? Um, <laughs> a little Bible study boyfriend. <laughs> But, you know, um, just ask God to give you clarity, honestly. Just just ask God to give you clarity. You know, that's my sis. She know I'm just messing with her. Um, yeah, but serious on a serious note, Kiki. That's my chair usher, too. She may, she take all the chairs for me. When people come in here trying to throw stuff at me. <laughs> nah, don't feel ashamed. Um, just, I would just ask God to um, actually, for real, just tell him to give you a better understanding by what he means. It's, that's the thing. One thing about God, if, if, if God says something to you and you're not sure about it, guess what? You can ask him to give you um, a better understanding. Look at Gideon. If anybody know about the story of Gideon in the Bible, Gideon asked God for like three or four signs. Now, I got to find, I'm going I'm to read the actual story, but this is what I'm about to say is paraphrasing. But basically, Gideon, I think it was 300 of them to go fight 30,000 or 3,000 of them fighting 30,000 men or something like that it was big it was either 300 of them fighting 3,000 of those or 30,000 made like a handkerchief just float in out of nowhere <laughs> laying right on his lap and then told him again you sure I need one more sign these ain't the signs I'm just giving you a, a basically a, a, a understanding of getting clarification from God yeah, I need one more sign. Bunch of rocks to start falling. Hmm. Now go fight those men. All right, I need one more sign. But what I'm trying to say out of that is every time Gideon asked God for a sign, God gave him another sign that it was him saying it. So that's all you got to do. Um, if you're not sure, if you're not sure or you need more clarity, just ask God and wait on the answer. Don't move. Just ask him. God is the Instagram man. Is that my, what you call it again? I'm I'm, a, I'm using this one. I'm using this one. My kingdom spouse. Woo! My kingdom spouse. Like, show me another sign. <laughs> right, right. But yeah, let me get back into this. Um, if y'all got any questions, any other things, uh, just 
throw them in the comments. Don't over flood me. I'm trying to get out of here, y'all. I have to be obedient to the playlist. Um, and I still got a few songs to go. But yeah, um, Kiki, just ask God for more um, clarity. Kingdom Spouse is dope, though. I ain't gonna lie. That is dope. Look at Kiki coming over. She got the she got the she got the uh the church lingo, the 2022 church lingo. We changing the game out here, y'all. We changing the game. <laughs> Let's go. This is over and over by Naomi Rain. Let's get it. Y'all really over here working me. I didn't even get the next song ready. This is how y'all don't do me. This is how y'all doing me. All right. Give me a give me a second. Um Mama Zoom. Ugh, come on, Mama Zoom. That made me want to throw some gang signs up. That was tight. Where you get that from? Let me find out they got some new stuff in here that I don't know about. I should be knowing about everything on me. Where'd you get the graffiti from, Mama Zoom? Where you, listen, listen. Where's you getting this from? That's tight. I'm not going. I'm not going. Yeah, that was. Look at Mob. That was fun. <laughs> that was fun, though. I ain't gonna lie. Where you get that from? I didn't know that was in here. I think they dropped them today. Oh, nice. Come on, graffiti. Come on, Golden with the spray gun. Yee, we out here. All right, give me a second. I gotta write Mama Zoom. Mama Zoom got a lot of tickets, y'all. She must. She don't think she do, but she do. Mama Zoom got a lot of tickets in this thing. I'll be writing her name down every time. Yeah, that one was dope. I like that. That'll be tight if you can put in. If It'll be tight if you can write in what you want it to spray. Like it'll say L-O-E across the screen. That'll be dope. Bigo, you heard me. You steal everything else I say. Steal that. All right, give me a second, y'all. Taddy T, I see you. I see you, brother. God bless you, man. You know, we praying for you. And stop trying to steal my mom. Every time I get a chance to talk on this mic, I got to remind Mr. Taddy T himself, stop trying to steal my mother. You think because you got tattoos everywhere and piercings, you the coolest cat in the... And she do like cats, too. You the coolest cat on the Bigo. I'm going to go get my face tatted. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, all right, y'all. I was supposed to have my... <laughs> I can't share. It ain't enough mom to go around, y'all. But yeah, me and tatted, we, me and tatted our brothers through the same mother. They got the same... Tatted, the mom got... Tatted got the same mom and dad with mom, as you can see by the profile. But mom cheated on his dad with my dad, and that's why I'm black from the same mama. All of these are lies, y'all, so don't go, ooh, I got some tea. Did you know Maria cheated on daddy T, dad, and that, that's how Elder got born? It's all a joke. It's all a joke. <laughs> you can't, you got to be careful what you say on Bigo, because they will go take it to another room. I'll be strolling and going there. And it'll be a Kermit the Frog picture. That's none of my business. You go click click the that's none of my business room. They in there talking about me. Yeah, you know, Elder, you know, mom cheated on uh Patty T dad, and that's how Elder Craft was born. And and the person with the T will have all the dragons on the app. They sitting on 190 boxes off of made up story because I'd have said something <laughs> playing around and didn't say I'm just playing. Right. <laughs> Right, right. It'd be all on YouTube and everything. Oh man, y'all help me, help me. I didn't get my song ready. Um, for y'all that don't know, every time you guys throw a hundred bean gift, I put your name on this raffle ticket. We do a hundred and fifty dollar grocery giveaway. Me and Franny Mac do a hundred and fifty dollar grocery giveaway every month to two families on the seventh of every month. So um, that's why when you see people throwing gifts, and I stop and grab this thing and be. Right, Elder shares family tea. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. I'm exposing everything. 
Oh, man. Okay. All right. For y'all that don't know, I love Naomi Rain. So, you know this. I don't know. Franny Mac was in here. She was in here earlier. She probably tired. She was she was hanging out earlier. Um, okay, we added a we added a Maverick City worship and elevation worship thing. We into the Kurt Franklins and Anthony Browns and Nor Smoky Norfolks and all that. So this shouldn't take that long. Um, oh, come on, Daddy D. Look, let me pick the song. I got your name. I'm right about to write your name down. That is tight. Y'all can throw those all day. I would not complain. I was in Elder Room. He supposed to be a preacher, and all I seen was graffiti all on the dang on screen. He supposed to be saved. For y'all that don't know, I'm trying to work on this TV show type of thing called You Supposed to Be Saved. And that's what it's basically about. It's about a, a brother that loves the Lord, but he don't look like church people. But he has a very devoted life to God. But the people he hang with are not saved like him. So they keep catching him up with these people. And they say, you supposed to be saved. They might catch me standing in a crowd of weed smokers talking about God. They don't hear me talking about God. They just see me in a crowd with the weed smokers. And they, you know, it's the, and the show is called You Supposed to Be Saved. It's about a bunch of judgmental Christians that's always looking for a reason to say somebody don't know Jesus. And I'm on there trying to show everybody that they can know Jesus no matter what they look like. I think Tatted T should be my co-star because he got a lot of tattoos and face tats and piercings and stuff like that. So that definitely will make some old Bible thumping saints be like, you supposed to be saved. I was looking for my Jets. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she stay with the she do stay with the uh the naval fleet the naval fleet. She the Air Force. <laughs> right. They don't want to hear stuff about God coming from us. You know, I, I try to be nice today. As y'all can see, I don't got this big old forehead covered up. But uh, thanks to my lovely mom, she told me to get some face cream to get these black spots off my forehead. I used to have this for wearing my hat so much, y'all. Let me tell you a funny story real quick and embarrass myself. Look at Kiki. I knew it. I knew it, Kiki. I knew it. I knew he was going to hit me with the oop. I knew it. Um, I was wearing a hat so much. Not cream. I, well, yeah, that's what I got. It's scrub. It's called charcoal. It's called charcoal or something. But anyways, you just rub it on your face and then rinse it off. And then this other one is for black spots. And I just put it on my forehead. As you can see, they kind of went away. They used, it used to look like I had two birthmarks on my forehead. But I don't anymore. And that came from wearing a hat for a year and a half straight. And then in the summer, when you go outside with a hat on, when you remove it, your face look racist with the other half of your face. So, yeah, we took care of that problem. That's why you don't see me with hats on, because I'm trying to make sure everything get on one accord. My forehead needs to be equally yoked with my face, okay? It needs to be equally yoked. Let me get these songs together, y'all. Let me get these songs together for y'all. Where is lovely Nay? I think shrug, shrug. I think you're trying to roast me, shrug. I think you're trying to roast. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Um, but yeah, so we back in the game. I look like I'm. It's, you know, look. Yeah, we. Yeah, yeah. We. I think we uh equally yoked. I think it's working out. Um, yeah, we back. Now it got me. Don't want to wear no hats. I was looking at myself in the mirror the other day, like, ooh, I look 28. Don't say my age. Mom is. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Woo! She's a young lady, okay? Y'all don't worry about her age, but her birthday is coming up in two days. Y'all can throw all the gifts to me. I'll tell her thank you for you. Did that, did that sound fair, mom? Throw all the gifts to me. I'll tell you thank you for you. Uh, here we go here we go here we go my world needs you come on Kurt Franklin Obedience. so y'all just bear with me um this next song I'm about to play um it's some people in here that want to rededicate their life back to Jesus um we believe in Jesus we've been saved baptized 
receive the Holy Spirit, all that. But some of us just want to re rededicate ourselves, um, start fresh. Not saying that you you were doing bad or you messed up or anything. It's just a fresh start. Just you know, when we get our license renewed, that don't mean we was driving bad. We just got to get it renewed. Um, look at it more so like that. But before I get into that, if, if, um, in Romans chapter ten, verse nine, it says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has risen him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart, one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Um, that's Romans 10 and 10. It says, believe in your heart. A lot of the times we, we don't... <laughs> How can I say this? Be very careful. We don't believe in Jesus with our heart. We believe in him with our mind. That's why we keep, that's why we still all over the place. That's why it's hard for us to walk in the calling of the Lord is because we're trying to use our mind to believe in Jesus. And it's in our heart. Believe in Jesus in your heart. When you believe in something with your heart, it's a love there. When you believe in something with your mind, it's an understanding there. We want to love God. People, people try understanding God, but the Bible tells us trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding because your mind can play tricks on you. Your mind can confuse you right out of believing. Your mind can um, get distracted by other things that are interesting. But if something is in your heart, it's a difference. So that's why it says, in uh, chapter 10, I mean, verse 10, it says, for with the heart, one believes unto righteousness and with and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So in your heart, you saying it's just like when you fall in love with somebody, when you fall in love with somebody, it don't matter how fine the girl is or how fine the guy is that walks past you when you not with that person you in love with. You ain't even going to give them the time of day. You're not even going to pay no attention to them because your heart is already satisfied with what with what's in it. This is the same thing we want to do with Jesus Christ. We want to receive and believe in him in our hearts, not in our mind. Confession is made to salvation by saying out of your mouth, Jesus Christ is the Lord. I believe that God um, rose him from the dead for my sins that I might be saved. That's confessing it. But believing that is a heart thing. When you believe in that in your heart, your walk becomes different. You have a different understanding. Just like if, if you love anything else and you believe in it in your heart, if you believe in your husband or your wife, if you love her and she's in your heart, not just something you're doing in your mind because you don't want. If you try to be married and, and, and if you try to be married and in love in your mind, Oh my God, you are not really loving the person. You're doing it because, say for instance, you could just, you could tell yourself, I need to get married because I don't want to co be uh, committing fornication. Um, so now you only got married to get that fornication thought out of your mind. Do you really love the person that you married? Is, is this person in your heart? You know, so this is the dedication that the Lord wants from us. Um, so I, I brought this up to say some people in here want to rededicate themselves and fall back in love with Jesus and return back to their first love, which was Jesus Christ. It's never too late. Um, the Bible says no man knows the day, the hour, the time. We don't know when the Lord will return, but we do want to make sure that we at least got our spiritual tune up with Jesus Christ. For those that are already saved, for those that are already sanctified, for I mean, for those that are already saved, that know the Lord, that read the Bible here and there, whatever the case may be, pray. Um, this is more of a tune-up, you know, just like your car. If you drive it too much without tuning it up, it'll break down on you. I believe the same thing is happening with some of us as saints. Um, we received Jesus Christ a long time ago, and we haven't even got a spiritual tune-up because we did it with our mind. I don't want to go to hell, so they said, I got to believe that G, you know, but in your heart develops a true relationship with him. In your heart develops a true relationship with God. Um, 
when you have that when you have that heart relationship with God, when you do things that are not pleasing to God, you feel like you cheated on him. He still loves you. Romans uh, 8 and 38 says that nothing can separate God from the love of us. He loves us no matter what we do. He loves us. We're his. But there should be a conviction. Ah, man, I feel bad. I did that. I didn't want to. I don't want to let God down. I don't want to hurt his feelings. I don't want to make him sad. You know, that's the kind of we still want to have that kind of spark in us when it comes to Jesus Christ. So if you believe that scripture I read, if you believe that Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior and God rose him from the dead for your sins, you are saved. This is more so of a rededication. I just brought it up because the song that I'm about to play, um, I want you to line that song up with your dedication back to Jesus Christ. The very the beautiful thing about this is nobody can see you. That's what I love about this ministry that God has given me. Nobody can see you, so you don't have to be ashamed of anybody looking at you. We can't see you. Only person y'all can see is my big head butt. So right there where you at, make an altar where you're at and let this song that I play minister to you um, and just let the words and just put your mind on Jesus Christ. Think about the things he's brought you uh, through. Think about the things he's brought you out of. Think about the things he's saved you from. Think about the times of trouble he has brought you out of. Think about the healings that he has in store for your life, for your future. Think about what he promised you and told you. Think about the, all of these things right now as I play this song and just rededicate yourself back to him. Um, reline yourself back up with, with him. Um, take this moment to be intimate with the Lord um, and let this song be the song that does it, that brings you closer to him. Amen. Amen. Malcolm X, all he was doing was causing black people to want to go to war with white people because what white people did to black people, which I mean, that's under, I understand what he was trying to do, but it's bigger than that. The enemy the devil is the one that takes over the minds of the people to get them to do the cruel things. We shouldn't be fighting against the races. We should be fighting against the devil. But Malcolm X was painting this picture that black people shouldn't use the tools that white people gave them to fight against white people. And, and, and when I read that, I'm like, okay, I get it. But this is bigger than black and white. This is about God and the devil. This is about good and evil. The, the platform is way bigger than fighting with each other because Jesus told us to turn the cheek. Everybody deserves a second chance. But if we listen to these Malcolm X types and these pro-black hate whites and whites hating black, if we listen to these people, we're going to continue to hate each other over something that happened 500 and 600 years ago. Some of us are still mad about slavery right now, and it ain't no slaves. The slave, the slavery is the same for everybody now. Work, going to work is the new slavery. White people were slaves too. Everybody want money. We slaves to the dollar now. The plantation is the job now. But you still got these types that are still mad and want to fight and kill white folk and white folk want to wipe out black folk because of stuff that happened back in the 18 and 1700s. That's how you know it's the devil. He said, I don't care how I get you to go to hell as long as you go. He don't care how he distracts you. If you don't got love in your heart, you're not getting there. Do you know these white folk, black folk, oh, we all love the same Jesus Christ, right? So we all got something in common. The devil done got so tricky on you. No, that's the white Jesus. I believe in the black Jesus. Oh my God. Jesus is Jesus. I don't care if he was orange. Y'all worried about the color and the texture of his skin. The Bible said he got feet like bronze and eyes like fire and hair like wool. What you think that is? I can't stand those people. He got feet like bronze, eyes like fire, and hair like wood. What you think he is? What color you think that is? Well, we don't even have to worry about that. Look where they were at. Bethlehem, all that stuff was in Africa. Those people over there look black. Who cares? That don't make us better than white people. That don't make white people better than us. That don't make us more than anybody or less than anybody. 
We get stuck on the wrong thing. Yeah, Jesus was black. All right, now I can believe in God. I just needed him to confirm that he wasn't white. Well, God can be, how do you think white people see God in their mind? Uh, uh, if, they, if they imagine God in their mind, what color do you think they see him as? A white God. When we imagine God in our mind, what color do you think we see him as? Black. When Asians imagine him in their mind, what color do you think they see him as? Well, Asian's not a color. Yellow. And I, I don't mean that to be racist, but y'all know what I'm saying. God made us in his image and likeness. So if I'm black, I'm going to think God is black because how I'm looking at God. That doesn't mean he's black. God is no color. He's the color that's comfortable to you to make you receive him even more. But we're not going to get hung up on all of this religious and race stuff. Well, if God is black, then I'll read the Bible. What? You got, you got terms and stipulations to the person that created you? Okay, well, yeah, if you show me you black and I might believe in you. Well, you can go on and sit on in hell for the rest of your life then because God don't got to do nothing he don't want to do. Let me get back on track. Go to, this one of my favorite ones right here. Go to Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 2 and 3. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 2 and 3. <sighs> Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 2 and 3. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 2 and 3. Come on, Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 2 and 3. Verse two says, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, write down for the record, everything I have said to you, Jeremiah, for the time is coming when I will restore the fortress of my people of Israel and Judah. I will bring them home to this land that I gave to the, to their ancestors and they will possess it again. And the Lord uh, and and again, I, the Lord, have spoken. In the King James Version, I believe it says, take a scroll. Let me see. But God tells Jeremiah, write down everything that I tell you. Write it down. This is how the Bible was um, wrote. It was inspired by 12 minor prophets and, oh, I forgot how many major ones. This is stuff I need to know because these apostles and, and pastors and People that went to school for it. These are the type of loaded things they're going to try to ask me to try to discredit me. But you can't discredit the Holy Spirit. Mm. All right. It says, thus speaketh the Lord, God of Israel, right? Saying, write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. Hmm. God told the prophets. Prophets are people that can hear from God. We all can hear from God. Some of us just not obedient. And you need to understand when God tell you something you don't listen, that's a form of witchcraft. I'm going to leave that right there. But yeah. So, here it is right here. This was the this was the one. This was the one. This was the one. Go to 2 Timothy. Woo! I believe 3 Chapter 3, verse 16. Yep, and 17. Three sixteens in the Bible are so dope. You got to read all of the three sixteens in the Bible. Um, 2 Timothy, verse, I mean, chapter 3, verse 16. 2 Timothy. And it says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. <laughs> and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Come on, good. Come on, the good. Now, let me read it. Because something said was breathed by God. One of the, one of these translations, what's the NLT? All scripture is inspired by the, no, that was, I think it was. 
it was breathe. I don't know which version that was. It said breathe. Oh, it was the English version, I think. Yes. Let me see. English Standard Version, I believe. Let me see. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. A lot of people have got offended because I've corrected them with the Bible and they said that I shouldn't do that. And that's actually the right thing to do. A lot of people can, they understand God. They understand what he's about, the concept and the stuff like that. But when it comes to the word of God, mm, you could tell what they know. Timothy, I believe if, it's, if I'm not mistaken, 2 Timothy 2 and 15 says, study to show thyself approved. I mean, God wants us to study the word so we can correct each other, not judge, but to correct because a lot of us don't understand. We just want God, but we don't want the word of God. And the Bible says, and what is that? Romans 10 and 17, faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So God wants us to know his word so we can go deeper in him. But we still struggle with the man side of us. Uh, don't come for me. I don't need you reading the Bible telling me about me. Well, I'm doing my job. People don't like this. That's why the Hebrews 4 and 12 says that it's a two-edged sword. Cutting through bone and marrow, soul and spirit, discerning. Each individual is something in the word of God that's going to make you ball your feet up in your shoes and clench your butt cheeks too when you hear it. I'm not sorry I had to go that way, but that's the only way you can understand what I'm saying. You got to feel it. But a lot of people don't like this. Oh, but the Bible fake though. <laughs> Remember? People like to come for the Bible. They like to attack the Bible. But everything else is okay. Everything else is perfectly fine. Some of y'all been watching wrestling for the last 30 years and still think it's real. And if you say wrestling fake, I might lose you as a friend. You might stop following me and don't throw me one more gift. Oh, he came for my wrestling? Oh, wrestling is real. The Bible fake though, but wrestling is real. Don't talk about my dinosaurs. I seen an alien before. Did you? Did you? you? Oh, you had to be that guy, huh? You, you had to be that guy. <laughs> right. Come on, the good. Most controversial book in the whole world. And for that very reason. Exactly. Because it has withstood the test of time. Well, the Bible contradicts itself. No, you just need to understand Old Testament and New Testament. You're studying too hard and you're studying wrong. <laughs> Right. Somebody saw an alien. Okay. But what we're, what we're saying here is they haven't proven none of this stuff. Oh, Area 51. Why is the area there if you don't want us to believe that the aliens are real, but you do want us to believe that they're real, but you don't want to show us? I don't got time for that. Now, I can understand somebody saying the Bible is fake if you like, if you like, no, the Bible is real, but I'm not going to let you read it, though. But it's real. I can understand a person saying that. Oh, the Bible fake. Every time I try to read it, they won't let me read it. That's what they do with aliens. Aliens are real. Let me see one. We can't do it. What? Wait, 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 wait. Wait, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Aliens are, you're telling me that aliens are real, and I said, okay, I want to see one. And then you said, no, we can't show you because it might freak the world out. Well, aliens are fake until I see it. But then on the flip side, somebody say, the Bible is real. And a person like, well, let me read it. And you like, nope, can't let you read it. Yeah, then I can understand the person saying the Bible is fake then. But it's the bestseller. They don't have to burn Bibles because people don't believe in it anyways. 
But I bet you if everybody in the world started reading it and started living by it and it started changing up some governments, it started changing up hospital visits and people needing pharmaceuticals and criminals stopped committing crime so the jails shut down and uh, uh, criminals stop committing crime so the police lose their jobs. Uh, we really start healing each other by laying of hands and they close down all the big pharmas. Then you'll see them start burning the Bible. Oh, no, that Bible, everybody reading it. Ain't nobody getting sick no more. They not committing crimes no more. They not killing each other no more. Burn it! We losing money. I hope y'all understood what that, what I just said. If ain't nobody committing crimes and ain't nobody getting sick like that no more, jails gotta shut down. Police gotta quit. Pharmaceuticals got to stop creating these medicines that make you sick for one thing so you can get subscribed for this. Then when you take that, that make you sick for this. And then when you take that and make you sick for that, when you take that and make you sick for that. But they drying you upside down, hanging you by your leg for every penny because you believe in medicine and not God. Dude. Right, it's the word and they can't do nothing about it now. It's out there. It's, they can't stop it now. It's all it's all on and popping. But yeah. Malachi chapter 3, verse 16 talks about a book of remembrance. Um, that's why I call this message that book hits different. That goes for the Bible in general. It really does hit different than any other book. Malachi 3 and 16, it, it talks about. A book of remembrance because God's people were gathered amongst each other talking about and honoring the name of God in the time where the Levites were turning their backs on God. They were stealing the church money. They were stealing from the storehouse. They was marrying um they were marrying um pagan women, putting away their wives and marrying witches, marrying uh women of other um belief systems. And all this was going on and, and Malachi and Malachi was trying to warn them. But there was this group of people of God's people that through all of that turmoil, they still stuck right there with God and was like, I don't care what's going on around me. God is good. He real. He still exists. And I'm not stepping off of that. I'm not be torn from it. And I'm not changing from it. And God was eavesdropping on a conversation and he wrote their names in a scroll of remembrance. For the day of judgment, when judgment comes, we got the Lamb Book of Life, but then we have this Book of Remembrance. This is called the Book of Remembrance. This Book of Remembrance was God putting it down. Okay, when in judgment, y'all good. Don't even y'all y'all good. Y'all y'all stood on the name. Y'all stood on my name. Y'all honored me no matter what was going on around me. People was getting into belief systems. They was floating. You still stay right there on the ground with me. And they got their names written in a, in a book called the Book of Remembrance. And they got to go up in there off of sticking firm and stand with God no matter what. So, you know, when a person asks you, when a person tells you that the Bible is fake, tell them you just don't believe in it. Don't call it fake because it's, it's not fake. The, God has manifested so much to us and we wouldn't have never knew the true living God if it wasn't for the book that he told his prophets to write. It's funny, we'll go listen to a fortune teller. We'll go sit right up in a, a fortune teller's office and he'll tell us everything about our future and we'll believe it. But God spoke to some prophets to tell us about our future and we don't believe it. For those that don't believe in the Bible, just back off and just go on. If you, you just don't believe. Stop trying to convince everybody else because you don't believe. You just don't believe. I don't believe in uh, fortune tellers. I don't believe in tarot card readers. I don't believe in none of that stuff. I don't give it no none of my attention. Everything I need is right there in that Bible that's been keeping me up to this point. So always remember, don't let nobody talk you out your faith. 
Don't let nobody talk you out your belief in the Bible. Don't let nobody change how you feel about God because they done found some new doctrine or they done found something that makes sense on paper to, to contrast what you believe in. Listen, the best thing to do is say, hey, I don't care. I don't care. Because they like to make us feel bad and say that we stupid or we don't like to think or we not uh, we perishing because we don't read. I don't need nothing but God. He told me to trust in him with all my heart. Lean not into my own understanding. That's been the safe haven for me. As long as I keep my mind on, on Jesus and stop trying to think, well, maybe that was a coincidence. But maybe that when you do that right there, you mess up your whole life. Now you're wrestling every day with believing if God is real or not. Just believe and trust. It's faith. You can't debate faith. It's faith. This is what I believe. That's what you believe. We'll see in the end. We should be cool right there with that. Amen. But yeah, let me, I got a few songs I'm going to play and then I'm going to get on out y'all way. Just always keep in mind that this Bible is real and this book hit different. Amen. Find out how good God really is because you want to go back and get all of the, the time that you wasted not serving him. You want to go back and get that and, and, and live in that moment, but God knows how to get you right at that time of surrender and give you newness, um, purity, um, understanding, love. It's so many jewels in stop when you stop running and say, yes, Lord. There's so much in it. Um, and I would encourage everybody, um, our time is coming close to the day where we are going to say yes to the Lord for those are, that are called and chosen Um I would just, you know, surrender to the best of your ability that you can. Just drop your hands and Lord, my life is in your hands. Then lift your hands back up and say, Lord, I give my life to you because it's well worth it. It's, um, it's well worth it. Like I see so many beautiful little attributes in it. Even in my kids, my, I got an eight year old and a three year old, eight year old and a two year old. And they love God hard and they two and eight. Like kids ain't thinking about God like that. They're thinking about the two fairy Santa Claus. Easter Bunny, my kids don't care nothing about that stuff. They care. My son, especially my eight-year-old, he he a little fireball for God. He incorporates God in everything he do, from video gaming to cooking. If I'm in there cooking, he gonna find a way to bring God up. And he, he, he reminds me of me. That's what I do. I'm always looking for a way to talk about God. You, I'm the type of person that'll mess up your TV show because I'm gonna come in there. What does this got to do with the Lord? You hear that? You know. That's just me. I don't try to do it on purpose. And I don't want people to not enjoy what they're doing. That's just me. I have to be obedient to it. Um, and my eight-year-old, he <laughs> he right up there. Hey, look, there you go. For y'all that don't know, that's my right, Tina Mae. That is my wife. We've been separated for three years, but the Lord is bringing everything back. Um, he's turning everything around and he's fixing um, what the enemy stole from us. So that's Juju Mom right there, y'all. That's Juju and Aramis Mom right there in the comments. Um, that's an awesome young lady, and she can cook. She's thinking about coming to the app and uh, cooking and stuff like that. So that'll be awesome to see because she. you think my personality, you think I got personality. Watch when y'all see this young lady. But um, I did, I want to speak, I want to pray some special prayers for Mama Zoom first. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I lift up Mama Zoom to you. Lord, I'm asking that you would answer her prayers, Lord. She's crying out to you. She's calling out to you for things. Um, she knows you. She's very well versed in you. She's very well versed in the relationship with you. God, I just pray her strength and understanding in you. Father God, that you would take her to the levels that you see she should be and take her there safely. Endow her with your precious Holy Spirit. Set the Holy Ghost fire under her feet, God. And send her running for you to win more souls to the kingdom. She is a great evangelist, Father God. And I'm praying that you would show her who she is. Show her what you see and give her the confidence to stand boldly before the people and minister Jesus as the Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name. Father God, I also want to lift up Chia Smooth to you. Father God, I'm asking that you would endow her with your power. This is a mighty woman of God. She is not confused about who she is in you. Father God, she just 
need an extra little, a little more from you, God. It's, and, and, and I ask that you would send peace into her household, Father God. A peace that surpasses all understanding. A peace that brings joy and love with it. Father God, strengthen this mighty woman of God and send her forth before the people as who you see her as and who you called her to be. Also, I lift up Golden, Sister Golden to you. This is our sister, Father God. She dreams dreams. She can see with the eyes that you have given her. Father God, I ask that you would place the things in her path that you need her to see so she can help move the kingdom forward in you. Father God, I'm asking that you would strengthen her eyes in you. Father God, I'm asking that you would strengthen her vision in you. Let her walk boldly before you, Father God, and talk with accuracy and see with accuracy to be able to save those lost souls that are in the ballast for you. In Jesus' name. Also, Lady Hazel, Father God, I ask that you would bless her life, touch her life, and reward her for her diligence, Father God. She has perfect attendance um, in you, Lord. She's always showing up, Father God. Show up in her life. Show out in her life. Show her who you, who you called her to be. Bless her in ways that she knows that it was nobody but you that did it. In Jesus' name. Also, Father God, we lift up sunshine before you. Strengthen her bones, Father God. Strengthen her back, Father God. Strengthen her, Lord. Sit her before you, Lord, and pour into her. Rejuvenate her. Revitalize her. Reconnect her with you in Jesus' name. Father God, just keep re up her life. As she goes empty, pour in more. As she pours out, pour in more. Restoration in her life in the name of Jesus. Father God, we lift up Brother Dino before you. Continue to strengthen this brother. You've already blessed him. You already showed a miracle in his life, helping him in the areas where he has been stricken for 20 years. Father God, you've redeemed him from that. Now I ask that you re resuscitate his spirit man in him. Restore his spirit man in him. Father God, send him out there to do great ministerial work. God, you called him to minister, pour into his life, strengthen his mind and um, lift him up in the areas of understanding and, and wisdom that he may walk as a mighty, mighty minister in your name, Jesus. And also, last but not least, Father God, I lift up Brother Draco De Niro. He's been on my heart for the last couple of days. Father God, I'm asking that you would strengthen him, strengthen him and let him know that no matter what it looks like, no matter what the situation looks like around him, that he keeps going and keeps pressing in you. Father God, restore him, restore him, restore him, restore him. Um, show, the, show him who the mighty man that he is in you. Father God, speak to his heart, speak to his spirit, and speak to him. And um, give him direction and understanding, wisdom and knowledge in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. Um, if I didn't pray for anybody, I was not leaving anybody out. I just had to pray in obedience. These are the names that God told me to call out. And he told me to say the, the things that needed to be said for them. Is there candy in those stockings? Yes, there actually is. Um, I took all the Christmas tree um, candy off and put them in there. I'm supposed to be putting them stockings up, y'all. Um, so next time you look behind my big old head, it might not be no Christmas stockings right there. Thank you, Mama's out. No, I'm just joking. But um, yeah, so with that being said, I pray that God will um, move on each and every last person in this room, open doors for those mend relationships and family, um, mend relationships um, as far as marriages and um, boyfriends and girl girlfriends and things like that. Strengthen those areas, Lord. Um, endow us with the spirit of love and unconditional love, agape love. Love's with the, we love without condition or terms. If you do this for me, then I'll do that for you. If you show me this, then I'll give you that. No, just love beyond um, condition. Um, I'm praying for that in the lives of each and every person in here. And I pray also that God would open financial doors for those. Those that are in the air, that have jobs. I'm speaking promotion over your life. Um, give us some time 
and just continue to show up on time, continue to, uh, listen, here it is right here. Be nice at work. Just be nice. Be nice to them, especially that person that get on your nerve. Be nice to them. Your promotion is behind that. Be nice to them. Um, if you got to dig deep in your happiness, go to your happy place and find something happy to do it, do it because your promotion is on the other side of this. Also, those that are, um, that got plans to launch businesses, uh, Grand Rising 7 million, those that have plans to launch businesses, go now. Don't hesitate. Don't think too long because if you think too long, you're going to procrastinate. Go, just go. Um, start, start moving like the business is already there. Start operating like the business is already there. Um, go into your business. This is what God has promised you. You, he, you, you, if God has promised you this, you can't fail at it. No matter what you do, your failures are life lessons. Your failures are lessons to have a perfect business. You want to, you want to fall off. You want to make mistakes. You want to fail because in the failures is how you learn how to do better or how to get it right. So don't let your failures um, stagnate you. Don't let your failures make you think that you can't, um, that, that that's not what God called you to do. It is what God, God called you to do. So just keep pressing and keep going. Amen. Um, you guys have a blessed night. Also, before I go, is there anybody in here looking to join a family? If you're looking to join a family, click my name up there where it says Elder Craft. Click the LOE People badge. And when you click that badge, click request to join family. Me or mom will let you in the family. I'm the founder. Mom is a co-founder. Um, and Valerie also is a co-founder, but I don't think she's in here or see it. But if you do it before I go to, before I get off, fully off here, I'll go and let you into the family. Mom has a welcome letter that she sends everybody. We have a bunch of new things. God has given me a bunch of new ministries that he needs people to head for our family. So be prepared for that. God is about to start doing a lot of things with us. Um, so stick around, stick around and don't let your head hang down. Um, keep your head up. In other words, you guys be blessed. Have a good night. LOE is in the building.